about this piece of crap Nomad. This is pretty self-explanatory. Inner, outer rocker. Let's get cutting. I take my rocker and I realize that I can cut up to here and the new rocker will be tucked underneath so I'm going to be cutting the rest off right there and then I'll begin to take the uh, inner rocker out which is a lot more work because there's bra floor braces that go across and it's uh, stitch welded to this so that's going to be fun. What I'm going to do is, I'd like to drill these out, but they're, they're bugger welds. There's no penetration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutoff wheel, cut them flat, then drill a pilot hole, and then drill right through it. And then those will be my holes for my plug welds. So I'm down with the cutoff wheel, and I had a hunch there wasn't good penetration because of how high the welds were so instead of drilling through a weld which will tear up your bits I uh, you know used my cutoff wheel and got them down relatively flat and then I stuck my air hammer between all the welds and it separated very easily without causing any damage so I got SEM copper weld on the weld zones on my inner rocker and while that's drying Doing a little mock up on my rocker. And, um, looks like I gotta cut that metal out. It's bad metal. So, I'm gonna cut that out where the tape line is and, uh, go from there. I got it cut out. Now I have to trace the shape of the metal as well as the metal flattened out. Now I'll weld the inner rocker in there. And as soon as I'm done welding that in, I can get the door and put the door on. And then screw in the rocker to where the gap is to with the door. And then weld that in. And we're done.
like doing with these screws when I'm done with them. I like to unscrew them and then take a spot cutter and cut around the top layer and then plug weld. And that way I don't have to weld from the top and the bottom. And here's the inner rocker from the underside. I already got it plug welded up top so now what I'm going to do is do a weld onto these braces. And I showed you how to do a hot tack before. This time, I'm just going to weld hot. And uh, I didn't use the whole panel. Basically, I cut it right there and stuffed it in there and tucked it in there. Because it's kind of hard to cut out all this. And then right here, it's right at the brace. And uh, another thing to mention, if you see these grinds, are like, why didn't we grind them down? This is kind of a hack job. This isn't a gearhead car. It's not. They're not paying top dollars, so I'm just trying trying to do some new things and cut some corners here and there. And that's one of them. And uh, another thing I didn't do is I didn't cut this old one out. This this rocker was replaced already, and they had left the uh, panel in there, the little flange. So I got the old one out, but there was still this. See that right there? I just left it in there, you know, it was in there good, so that uh, I wouldn't be doing this on that 69 Camaro that I just showed you in the last one. So, I'll get this welded in, and then we'll put on the door, and then we'll weld in the outer rocker. fitting in there. It's got a pretty decent gap. It's good enough. So now I just gotta weld it in. And uh, I'll be doing that on Monday maybe or whenever we jump back on this.
And here is the finished product. Wet sanded, buffed. So now, I'm going to take you through the process on the next one. First, I like to tape up to the edge, so I don't need to sand all the way at the edge, because then I'll have to buff on the edge. And that creates a danger of burning through on the edge. So, if you look, I have the tape right over the edge. And then right here, I have the tape going upward so it's not all the way in the corner of the cavity and creating a problem when I have to buff it out. So this is how I like to do it when I wet sand it. And when I start buffing, I take this piece of tape off. And then I buff the top of this. And then take this piece of tape off and then roll, roll the buffer off this edge. I'm done wet sanding, and as you can see, I peeled off the tape that was riding along the wall. So now my buffer can get in there and buffer that area that will go from orange peel to no peel. And I won't have a problem with trying to dig my buffer in the corner getting out scratches because there is no scratches down there. And uh, as far as this goes, I'm going to keep this on here. And I'm going to buff, I guess, the corner and then the top. And then when I'm all done with that, I peel this off. And then rub my buffer over the top so the edges roll off. And then I'll get that fine little area where the buffer won't be able to get close enough to the tape to get the scratches out. Now I'm done with my first stage of compound. It's nice and shiny, there's no more haze. But now I want to lessen the swirls. So what I'm going to do now is stick the same compound onto a foam pad and go over everything.
Sacramento, if you wanted a mobile phone, you had to sign a contract. You had no choice. Ten years ago, if you uttered the word unlimited in a wireless store, $50. Now it's time to polish. And I'll switch over to the black phone pad. Not so fast. Everything didn't go according to plan. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say I'm a body tech first that knows how to paint. I'm not a great painter. I've never been through all the trials and tribulations and mistakes that painters go through to learn what they know. So I tip my cap. <clears throat> In reference to the rims, there was a couple of mistakes. Mistake number one. The painter wanted two coats of clear on it and he wanted me to cut just a little bit of the orange peel out with 2,000 then go to 3,000 and then buff. When it comes time to cut and buff, the owner wants them cut flat, just like the car. And I knew there was a conflict there because two coats isn't enough to cut it flat. So the first rim I burned through. <coughs> the other rims I didn't burn through. And I burned through on the first one because I chased every little piece of orange peel and uh, there was no clear coat on it. The other ones were relatively flat but not completely flat and uh, they looked just as good as the other one that was cut too flat. So that was mistake number one. Problem number two. When I went to repaint that rim, I actually sanded a little bit of the clear coat off when I was prepping for paint. And what happens is when you have fresh base coat that's only been sprayed like a couple days before you respray it, the solvents in that base coat are still active and they're still in there. And so when your new base coat hits that, it reacts and wrinkles right away. So I saw it wrinkle right away and I was frustrated because I already burned through that one rim. So what I did at that point is I threw some heat on there, got all the solvents out of there, sanded the wrinkled area, primed the wrinkled area, sanded the wrinkled area, and then I sprayed some clear coat on there, just one coat. And then at that point, the clear coat was like a sealer, which sealed off any remaining solvents so there would be no wrinkling. <clears throat> and then I lightly sanded that clear coat to uh, not burn through it, and uh, then I went ahead and painted it and cleared it and didn't have any issues after that. Problem number three. When you're shooting black base and you're using a low end clear coat and you're cutting it flat and buffing it, you might have a problem with little solvent bubbles in the black that you could see if you look really closely. And uh, unfortunately, I had that in my rims. You can barely see them, but they're there. There's three things that could cause that a low end clear, like Omni, over reducing it, or hammering on your clear. Uh, I don't know if I hammered on my clear because it's a detail gun, it has a 1.0 tip, and it's a slow gun, it doesn't deposit that much clear. Um, I did over reduce a little bit because it wasn't coming out of the gun, but I didn't over reduce it by a lot, but that could be it. Not sure. But the uh, clear coat is Spies Heckler Permasolid. So I'll look into that situation. Um, it's not a deal breaker where we got to paint them again, but uh, in certain little areas I see the bubbles. I don't think anybody else will see them unless you're a painter. But it is a problem, and it's something i got to learn from. And um, what I learned is that if I'm shooting black, I'm going to live with a little more peel because it will give the solvents a lot of time to evaporate. So... Uh, 
that's pretty much it. And uh, if I have any words of wisdom, it is to uh, show your vulnerability sometimes. Especially when you're in a situation where you're around a guy that knows more than you and he's teaching you something. Show him you're vulnerable sometimes. Ask him the questions. Don't act like you know everything. Because if you act like you know everything, you might be unapproachable. He might not want to teach you something, you know. So ask the right questions at the right time. And be humble and uh, show your vulnerability sometimes. Because uh, I've seen a lot of guys come in and out of this trade who think they know everything. And they're the first ones to go because... No one wants to teach them anything because they're stubborn, they have a chip on their shoulder, and they think they know everything when they don't know a thing. So uh, I tip my cap to all you painters. The job turned out okay, but it could get better, and it will get better. <clears throat> but I learned. I learned something from it. So uh, stay humble, guys.